So let's move on to modeling the slow moving consumer goods business in Excel. So please open file attached to the lecture, which is called slow moving consumer goods business model version two. And here in master sheet, you will find a table of contents. So we have listed all the sheets we have created. So we are modeling separately in different positions. As always, we will start with the sales. So let's go to sales. We can go with either through here or through here. So as you can see, we start with quantity sold. So here in row 11, we have a sum of all sold per month. As you can see, model is done on a monthly basis. Now, when you look at how we have divided, we did it by channels. So we have our own e-commerce and we also sell through other retail chains. So we've got in our e-commerce sold 100,000 units in January and then 600,000 in retail chains as well in January. Obviously, this is in thousands of units. As you can see, there is some seasonality. So when we look at different months, we have a different results. So usually it's around 7,000 units, but like in April, October, November, we can see that there is high season. Then as a second step, we add the average prices. So we have a separate average price for the e-commerce and separate for the retail chains. As you can see, the own e-commerce price is higher. So it's 80 US dollars per unit per vacuum cleaner and 50 is for the retail chains. This is due to the fact that uh, in our e-commerce, we sell directly to the customers, whereas here we sell to the middleman. So there has to be some space for the middleman to charge his premium. We assumed the same price for each and every month. Obviously, you, you can have a seasonality in that as well. And then we calculate using some product function, the average price for the whole company. We use some product function due to the fact that we don't want to have a straight average, but we want as weights to use how much units we sell. Now, on the base of this, what we do is calculate the total sales and we do it by channels. So let me just move it back so we can see that we have our own e-commerce channel sales being uh, equal to 8 million. And then we have 30 million in sales to retail chains. And this generates 38 million in January, so called I. As you may guess, the sales are simply a multiplication of two elements. So from previous calculations, we, we get a quantity sold. And then the average price is obviously from a specific row. So in the case of own e-commerce, we take it from row 17. So what we've got in row 23 is actually taken from row 17. Now, once we've got the total sales and we input some data on the market size in uh, row 30, we can calculate something which is called the market share. So we simply divide how much we sell to a specific segment or through a specific channel as this. So we sell 100 to own e-commerce and then we have the e-commerce on uh, being, being equal to 2 million units. So in this way, we have 5% share. And uh, we do that obviously the same for retail chain. And as you can see, our share may differ over the period. And finally, we uh, calculate the shares of sales. So we see that uh, our own e-commerce generates 40% of the sales, whereas the retail chains are equal to 86% of the total sales. So that's in short. In the next lecture, I will look at the cost and then we will move on to gross margin, net margin, and finally to profit.